Well, if we have a rule for when we're multiplying two functions together, it only makes sense we have one when we're dividing two functions. So the quotient rule, so this time when you've got a function of x divided by another function of x, and there it is in its official formula. No, 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 no. Much more fun this way. Square the bottom, right down the bottom, diff the top, minus right down the top and diff the bottom. Yeah, so square the bottom, right down the bottom and diff the top, minus right down the top and diff the bottom. So we get something like this. X over 1 plus 2x. So I say, basically I'm doing it as I'm saying it. Square the bottom. So the first thing I do is, okay, on the bottom of the fraction, it was 1 plus 2x, so now I'll write 1 plus 2x squared. I've squared the bottom. Then we go to the top of the fraction, write down the bottom, 1 plus 2x, diff the top, 1, minus, and that's where you've got to be careful, this one's minus, not plus, minus, write down the top, x, diff the bottom, 2. And that tidies all up to get 1 on 1 plus 2x all squared. 2x on the square root of x squared minus 4. Square the bottom. Well, when we square the bottom in this case, square a square root, that cancels out. So I just have x squared minus 4 on the bottom. Now, the top of the fraction. So we squared the bottom. Right down the bottom, x squared minus 4 to the half. Diff the top, 2 minus, right down the top, 2x. Diff the bottom, but the bottom I'm going to have to use my chain rule because that's x squared minus 4 to the power of a half. So bring down the power, half. Lower the power, minus a half. Diff the inside, 2x. All right, so let's tidy this up. We have a common factor of 2 on the top. We also have a common factor of x squared minus 4 to the power of minus a half. But the minus a half means... Hey, put it on the other side of the fraction. So we end up with negative 8 on x squared minus 4, square root x squared minus 4. Now, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. The reciprocal rule. You won't find this in textbooks. Ah. It's when you've got a constant on the top of the fraction constant on the top of the fraction. That just saves a little bit of time. We don't have to put it back in index form. We can simply go minus the derivative on the function squared. So there's a very simple one, 1 on x squared. Sure, I could turn that into x to the negative 2, or I can say, hang on, that's just minus the derivative on the function squared. So people say, well, minus the derivative of what? Well, it has to be of the bottom of the fraction, because we're using this situation when there's a constant on the top. And if I differentiate with a constant, I get zero. So when I say minus the derivative, derivative of x squared is 2x, so minus the derivative. On the function squared, x to the power of 4, x is cancel, minus 2 on x cubed. So minus the derivative on the function squared. y equals 6 on 4x squared plus 3. Again, minus the derivative on the function squared. But of course, there's a constant on top in this case. So like we've seen with other situations, if there's a constant, we just multiply the constant. So we'll have minus 6 times the derivative, 8x, over the function squared, minus 48x on 4x squared plus 3 all squared. So it can just save a little bit of time. Because so when you have a constant on the top of a fraction, minus the derivative on the function squared, all right, that shall do 